I wanted to make a video on Ross because I don't see a lot of English videos with information on Russia's next space station, but a few things have happened recently that have expanded the topic a bit. The title is not clickbait. There's a very real possibility that there will be no American successor to the ISS, leaving Ross as the only true successor to the ISS. You probably think that's crazy. You might be thinking, how could a country as backwards as Russia be capable of that? And what's wrong with NASA? Since the Ukraine war, a lot of people immediately dismiss Russian technology outright, forgetting that we had to bum rides from Russia to the ISS for a decade, between 2011 and 2020. I see the same thing with Chinese technology, where they aren't supposed to have access to advanced chip-making technology, then they release phones uh, with domestically made 7 nanometer chips. I've also seen multiple functional robots in person working among people day to day. But that's another topic. Before we get to Ross, let me give you a brief lore dump on the situation. The ISS was created when Russia ran out of money to finish the Mir-2 station, and the US didn't want to spend the money to complete space station freedom. So the two countries smashed what they had together and created the International Space Station. The ISS was initially launched in 1998, with the first expedition being in the year 2000. The initial lifespan was only going to be 20 years, so we are already stretching things a bit in the year 2024. In fact, many of the Soviet modules started construction in the 80s. It's long past the deadline for a new station already, but NASA keeps pushing the retirement date back. Right now, the Russians set a hard date for their exit in 2028, with NASA saying 2031. We can't simply keep extending the life of the station as it's already leaking air, and half of the crew spends their time on maintenance. We can't just replace the oldest modules as they're in the middle of the station and would require a lot of work to move everything around. We would also be beholden to older technology to keep them all connected with each other. So for safety, technological, and financial reasons, we need a new station. Unfortunately, right now there is no successor ready. So if we retire the ISS now, then there will be a gap in a permanent presence in low Earth orbit. Well, except for the Chinese, but we'll get back to them. NASA had an interesting solution for this problem. You see, NASA turned to private companies to restore their capability of human spaceflight, and it mostly worked. We have one reliable spacecraft and one unreliable spacecraft. So they thought they could do the same thing with a space station. While NASA focuses on the moon and Mars, private companies can take care of low Earth orbit. Now we have four potential private space stations to replace the International Space Station on behalf of NASA. First is the Orbital Reef by Blue Origin, aka Amazon in space. The station has been called a Business Park in Space by Blue Origin which makes it sound super exciting. Its module dimensions, while not officially disclosed yet, are larger than what is on the ISS and are designed to be launched by Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket. The problem is that this rocket hasn't even been launched yet and Blue's focus seems to be on prioritizing other projects right now. For example, their Project Kuiper Starlink competitor and their Moon Lander. So far, they've only completed some mock-ups of their station. Next is Starlab from Voyager Space and a whole bunch of other companies. This one is cool because it's monolithic. The whole station will go up in a single launch on the SpaceX Starship. However, as with the orbital reef, its rocket isn't quite ready yet. And while there is some progress, there's still a lot to do. Also, I can't find many tangible updates over how their hardware is doing. I see they're also working on mock-ups and an update on their urine recycler. Also, I'm worried about all of these partners as this could be a situation of there being too many cooks in the kitchen. Axiom Space is the next company on the list. The Axiom Station is the one station that I thought would actually work. Their station is built to a similar size to the ISS, so the launches are practical in scope. They have hardware being made right now. They've launched multiple manned missions via SpaceX, and they're developing a lunar suit. Unfortunately, they're nearing bankruptcy. They lost money on all of those SpaceX launches and they are behind in payments to Thales Alenia Space, who makes the pressurized modules for their station. The modules are supposed to be launched on already available rockets like the Falcon 9 or Vulcan. Basically, the modules will be attached to the ISS, then when complete, detach, and form an independent station. Finally, there's vast space with their single module station. With Axiom facing troubles, these guys might be in the lead now. Their station is almost built. It's one module. It can fit on an existing rocket, and it's entirely funded by a single crypto billionaire. Their station? 
will only be in orbit for three years and be a proof of concept for a larger second station. However, that second station will also be using the Starship architecture, which isn't functional yet. Vast's founder, Jed McCaleb, only can fund it through their first station and manned mission. They're betting everything on winning the next NASA contract. So their actual successor station hasn't been started yet, but they should be able to get their temporary station up. Now the Russian station is pretty different, but familiar. ROS will consist of four science modules surrounding a central core segment. Its orbit will be higher and more inclined than the ISS, allowing it to observe polar regions more effectively, and in turn, all of Russia. The station will also be able to perform maintenance on satellites that can dock with the station. The modules are exactly the same as modules that Russia has made before, with some more modern technology on the inside. Plus, the modules can be launched on rockets that exist today, like Angara and Soyuz. There's nothing too crazy about the station. Everything is pretty familiar, and the launch methods are as well. It might be disappointing for those who want huge rotating future stations, but this method is the most practical and realistic. In fact, the most recent two modules attached to the ISS were essentially the same. Russia has been thinking about a successor to the ISS for a while. Initially, the plan was to add on to the current Russian segment of the ISS, and then when the ISS was retired, Simply detach the newer nodes and you'd have a new independent station. Similar to the Axiom space plan, you can see here a model of the ISS with the proposed new segments, which look exactly like the current Ross mockups. By the way, I stole this picture from Russian Space Web if you want a ton of information on everything about Russian space. The Naka module and node module was attached, but it was determined that it would be better to make a whole new station starting with the power module being constructed right now. By the way, the node module at the core of the station is rated to fly for 50 years, so when the science or power modules expire, you just pop them off and replace them with another new module. So there is some future proofing built in. The construction of the station will be built in two phases. Phase one is two large modules attached around the central core. This should be constructed between 2027 and 2030. After that, Phase 2 will begin with the final two modules being attached by 2033. Ross will be able to hold between two and four cosmonauts. However, the station is not planned to be manned continuously, with it able to run autonomously. So we have a station that has modules that have been built before, that will launch on a rocket that exists, is government funded so we don't need to rely on commercial viability, doesn't do anything radically new, and it's being built right now. So we now have all our proposed contenders, and we can get to why I think Ross will be the only International Space Station successor, at least for a time. Ross is the top priority for Russia right now. It is backed by the government, funded by the government, and all the technology for its existence exists. I don't doubt Russia can get at least the first couple modules up. And when that happens, Russia can exit the ISS and focus all of their funding on Ross. Will the first module go up in 2027? Everything in space gets delayed, so maybe not. It's a deadline before the deadline where the ISS is supposed to go offline, but I think it'll at least be ready by 2030 in some form. What about the other stations? NASA thought they could leave low Earth orbit to private space companies so they could focus on the Moon and Mars. This would put most of the financial burden on private companies to manage a station, while NASA focuses on the next step. One station I neglected to mention is the Lunar Gateway. NASA's station around the moon that will supposedly help with moon missions. I say supposedly because there has been a lot of controversy surrounding it and the Artemis program. Essentially, there really isn't a need for a moon station to facilitate moon missions. Artemis is beyond the scope of this video, though. As for the commercial stations, the big problem is there probably isn't a market for more than one private station. And that's not just my opinion. The CEOs of Vast and Axiom have both said that NASA should only fund one private station because there isn't a market for more than one, the two candidates who are actually building modules right now. And I mentioned it before, but Axiom has lost money on all of their private space flights to the ISS so far and are in deep financial trouble. Vast singular billionaire funder, on the other hand, can only fund the first prototype station and one mission to the station. This station will only have three missions in total. If they can even get these missions, to prove to NASA they can get more funding for another station, 
Blue Origin is too focused on their Moonlander, and Voyager Space probably won't have any concrete modules being developed to get into the next round of funding. There is a great video by Eager Space that explains in detail why commercial space stations can't work right now. Go check it out if you want to be disappointed. But there's basically a lack of billionaires who would want to go to a space station. If there are a handful that want to go to space, then they can just buy a cheaper ride on a Dragon capsule or go to Russia or China. And that brings me to my next big issue. These commercial stations aren't being developed in a vacuum. If Russia completes their station, or at least some of it, they will leave the ISS, either on their proposed date of 2028, or by the time NASA set in 2031, or maybe something catastrophic happens and they have to shut it down next year, but who knows. NASA recently acknowledged that there may be a gap in low Earth orbit. They'll probably try and extend the ISS beyond 2031 if they have nothing ready. But safety might take priority, and how will they run the station if Russia exits? Pay Russia a stipend to keep a cosmonaut on duty, or rent the Russian segment an extra couple of years? What if these commercial stations turn out to be financial dead ends for their companies? If there is a gap in American low Earth orbit, there will still be two stations in space. Of course I mentioned the Russian station, but there is also the Chinese station. The Chinese station is similar to Russian station designs, with three modules. However, China plans to add three more segments to double the station size and hold six astronauts. Keep in mind there are usually only about 10 people permanently stationed in space at any one time. Excluding tourists or astronauts doing short stays, there are usually four astronauts from NASA, three from Roscosmos, and three on the Chinese space station. That's the entire market for astronauts today. Other countries can swap out American or Russian astronauts, but they go through Russia or the US anyway. Will this number radically increase in the future? I doubt it. Now, I mentioned the commercial stations not being developed in a vacuum. In this world where there are 10 people in low Earth orbit, four are now on Ross, and now six are on the Chinese station. That leaves four astronauts for NASA to play with, excluding those supposedly going on Artemis missions. Four astronauts every six months, so eight astronauts a year. Can you make a business off of that? NASA spends $3 billion a year to maintain the ISS. There's probably not going to be many billionaire tourists, but perhaps countries will sponsor their own astronauts for short stays and national pride. But in this world we are rapidly approaching, there might not be an American station, but there will be plenty of spots on the Russian or Chinese stations. I don't expect the ESA to send astronauts to Russia at this time, but that can change in 10 years. Who knows? Also, what about other countries like Turkey or the UAE? These countries could build relationships and take their business away from potential commercial stations, making the financial prospects worse. Imagine a world where we look up in 2034, 10 years from now, and there's no American station and only a Chinese and Russian one. Keep in mind the dinky station around the moon will only be occupied during moon missions, unless that gets canceled too, and it doesn't even have windows. Maybe Elon will save us, but who knows, Starship is coming along, but it still doesn't even have life support, and they're definitely not thinking about a space station right now. Let me know what you think. I, I know I'll get a lot of backlash for saying Russia will make a new space station, but they've done it many times before, and uh, we've never had a commercial station. My best solution would be to take the two modules currently being built of the Lunar Gateway Station and smash them together with the module that Axiom is building right now, then just take over all operations from them, or maybe patch things up with Russia or even China and join them. At least we'd have something to go to for the time being. But maybe that will be too humiliating to come crawling back. But is it worse than having nothing at all? Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. And check out that Eager Space video. I will link it in the description. It goes into detail about why commercial stations aren't viable. See you guys in the next one.